Hi everybody, it's Debbie from Mini FEHQ. Um, we are going live with Mike Downer from UKSG and Gratitude Games. I'm just going to add him now. So we're hoping everybody's having a good evening and your day's been okay. Um, yeah, and everyone is pretty cool. Bonnie from Voltaire. Evening, Bonnie. I'm just waiting for my partner in crime to join me. Oh, no, no, we hit movement. Oh, you're upside down. What are you doing, Mike? Okay, quick there. Yeah, hey. that's better. Is that better? Evening, <laughs> how are you? Oh, God. I love technology, Debbie. You, Thank you. You hate technology <laughs> with a passion, so I apologise for this. Yeah. But hey, you got here in the end, which is exactly what we're all aiming for. So how are you doing this evening? Yeah, good. All good. Looking forward to this. <laughs> like a hole in the head. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so welcome to our Tuesday night in with Effie and friends. Um, oh, you've got Mr. Rick. He is laughing at us as we speak, so thanks for that, Rick. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so tell us about you. Uh, oh, God. Where do we start, Debbie? Um, I joined the fire service in um, 2002, so 18 years service now uh, with Buckinghamshire Fire and Rescue Service. Um, Away from the fire service, uh, I'm married to Lorna. I've got uh, two great boys, uh, and the three of them are basically my life um, outside of the fire service. And uh, yeah, um, it's fire service and family life. That is me. Yeah, but that's not completely true, is it? Because you've decided to go all out and uh, come up with this fantastic idea, which is the UK Emergency Services Giving Charity and also the Gratitude Games, so that's not completely true. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, tell yeah. us about um, that. So I uh, woke one morning and turned to Lorna and told her I'd had this dream, and it was about how we could um, basically make people's lives better, uh, how we could create a charity that could support the mental health of emergency responders. Um, I I don't suffer with and haven't, to my knowledge, uh, suffered with any type of mental health uh, issues. Um, there are obviously things that I've seen that I don't want to, I wish I hadn't seen, but um, I've seen a lot of people go through some really tough times in the fire service. Uh, a lot of people in the ambulance service and the police, because we work quite closely with them. And... Um, seeing that the government was withdrawing their funding for mine's blue light program, which wasn't the best, but it was something. Um, it really kind of hit an, a, a, a note with me to say something needs to be done. And um, that was when I made contact with quite a lot of people, um, some very influential people and got this thing off the ground. And that was nearly two years ago now. Um, so it's been a lot of work, two years of work to, to build something, to create something that isn't a, um, a sports day in a field, but is actually a proper recognition of those who serve or have served or their family because they go through a lot and um, just to give something back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I think is great. And, you know, we've been on this journey with you, so we know what it's been and how important it is to you. So, yeah, that's that's cracking. So, you know... I guess you just wrapped up my question number two of why it's important to you and why you felt you, you needed to set the, you know, the, this whole thing up. But just just so our guys know, because obviously we're raising money for you with various little activities we're trying to do in lockdown. Why did you choose to partner with Force Tech One? Um, I'll, I'll go really back to the to the start. I mean, we when I first came up with this idea. I, I'm no, I'm somebody who gets things done, but I'm not, I'm not an expert in any of those fields. I just know people. I can get things done, and for all of the sports that we're looking at, we've gone to governing bodies or the, the best people with the right attitudes. And Forces Equine was a perfect fit for making sure that why recreate something when there's something already there? Something that, um, I mean, I I attended uh, Feg not last year the year before and it was a cracking weekend um 
and it just made absolute sense to just partner with you guys, um, support what you're doing where we can, um, hopefully bring some new members to, to Forces Equine, but also get the support from yourselves, uh, the expertise of how to run an equestrian event, um, and all the links into to that side of, of sport because it's something that I'm not really connected with. So it was just a perfect fit, really. Yeah, well, we're, we're very... And you and, your, we're, you and David are crackers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're very lucky as well. We've got the backing of Arena UK and all the, you know, big governing bodies, and they do steer us in the right direction. Otherwise, it would be carnage. Um, but, yeah, we, we have the same mentality as you, which is it's got to be fun. It's got to be downtime. And for us, it's about people that just enjoy some escapism with their horses and stuff. So it, it just made sense to support you. And, and it's all Caroline Vine's fault from the prison service, just so I can add. Um, she was the one yeah, it is Caroline's fault. <laughs> <It is. laughs> so uh, what have we got coming up with UKSG and the Gratitude Games? Give everybody an oversight into that. Um, we're... We're a couple of weeks away from launching our virtual challenge, the virtual games, uh, the virtual mile, gratitude mile, uh, call it as you will, uh, which you guys have already started, which is fantastic. And um, for all, everyone that's taking part from a equine side, uh, I can't thank you enough for kickstarting this charity, um, really, really uh, sort of warm into what we're trying to achieve and without even knowing anything about us, because obviously we are a very new charity. Um, so... The Gratitude Mile, we are aiming for, and it's a, quite a big one, but we're, we're looking for a million miles and a pound a mile from people across the UK, just to get this charity kick-started. Um, every penny that we raise as a charity, every single penny, um, there are no admin fees or anything at the moment. We don't have anybody working for us. Uh, so every penny does go to our charity, which I think is really important. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that's, our, that's our next step. We're waiting. We're waiting to kind of announce the games themselves. Uh, we're still. We've postponed uh, once before, and we're, we're waiting to make sure it's the right time with COVID and everything else that's going on. So we're we're just waiting on that one, but we will be announcing that very soon as well. Which will be wicked, and you know, like you said, we're we're all trying to do something in lockdown. So like the gratitude mile and stuff. We've got a few mad people out there doing, well, wearing their carpets out or getting out with their horse, Emma Jo. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're, we're all trying to do our bit, which I think is fantastic. Um, and I, I think it's a really, really good cause, to be fair. Um, so, so tell us about the, the main aim and why you want people to get involved. Well, the main aim of the charity is just to make us all in a better place when we serve the public as, as emergency responders. Um, we, what I want to do is create a, a single point that we can all go to really bring a sort of a collaborative approach to mental health because at the moment we're all working in silos. Our fire service um, works very differently to our neighbouring fire services and it just doesn't really make any sense. Um, what they're also not doing is they're not really taking any sort of learns from what they're, what they're faced with. Uh, and they're not sharing any learns. And I, I think that's really important is that we, we create a single a single point that has the access to all of the specialists all over the country. And it doesn't matter what service you work for, who you are, you can go and get the right access when you need it um, and not have to go through your own service or anyone else. And, and that's essentially what we're, we're trying to achieve here. Uh, to make sure that everyone has it when it's available. But you were trying to put in that void, weren't you? Because it was like, like you said earlier, it was taken away and you felt it, we need to start raising money to to get some support back in, which I think is really important. Well, we're... Yeah, um, I mean, the vo the void... The, the, the Blue Light programme was very good. I know quite a few people that uh, used it and um, a lot of people that benefited from the Blue Light programme. And I think it was really... It, it worked well and it served a purpose, but what uh, what's happening now is that the the ambulance staff charity, the firefighters charity, and Police Care UK are coming together with another a number of other charities to really focus on what the issue is and how they can combat it together, um, which is exactly what I wanted to do from day one, and it's really really good that they're doing this now, um, and they 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 recognise a lot of other um, services the prison services supported through uh, the charities 
uh, likewise our Coast Guard and others. So the, there's, the support goes out quite wide. Um, the only one at the minute that isn't is the NHS, and that's a real shame. Um, NHS charities, they there's a few things going on and we're in conversation with uh, NHS uh, charities together to look at how we can also um, support the mental health of all of the NHS workers, um, not just because of this pandemic, but for what they face daily anyway. So that's our, that's our next aim as well. But I think from our perspective, um, like I say, we always say about with FE and we've got Philippa's online, she's up there. Uh, and then we've got little people that are down there, but, getting together on a weekend and doing stuff with their horses from an FE point of view is so important. They just get to, well, we hope forget everything, you know, back at home, you know, within some sort of reason and just enjoy themselves with their horses and no pressure and it just be fun. Yeah. And I think sports, especially being ex-army, sport is a great sort of release for that. So I think what you're doing and the way we're trying to go about it is, is, is brilliant to be fair and I, I, I think it would be great. yeah thanks yeah I, th I think that's the, the one of the key to moving aside from the charity one of the key things for the, uh, the the games themselves is that it is a games for everybody it's not we're not out there to find the fastest runner or the strongest police officer or, or whatever it may be we are literally there to put on an event that anyone can feel comfortable to come and take part in. Uh, it doesn't matter what your, uh, what your experience is in, in that discipline. If you want to have a go, come and have a go. And that's what it's there for. Uh, but it's also, it's being run with the sports governing bodies. So we have the top, the absolute top of the sport getting involved to make this the best uh, experience that they can uh, the most professional experience that they can and it doesn't matter what level you compete at it's to make you feel like you are in this environment of something that's just a really special occasion for not just for us in emergency services but we want this to be a, a sort of a national recognized event that will happen every year and it doesn't matter who you are where you're from you will want to tune in and, and see and support it and that's that's our ultimate aim for the for the whole thing well that's that's what i think's right i mean i think we've spoke about this in the past where you can dial 999 and or you know 111 or whatever and you can have a copper an ambulance person um you know at the end of the phone but you can't dial 999 and get a um you know army navy air force person unless you're on love actually um, so I think it's we do a lot for our tri services, which I think is brilliant considering I've served. Uh, I think it's great that we're doing something on this level that is going to be for those people that we don't take for granted, but we feel are readily available at the end of that phone line. Um, and I think sport is a great way to do it. It's that release. It's going to be fab. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's it's the the sort of it is that thing that brings everyone together sport it, because everyone has the thing something that they like it, it might it there's something that gets everybody but sport does bring everyone together and it's just that way of of acknowledging it but it's also that in some of the events will be open to uh, members of the public um which i think is really important because we we don't want people just to look in we want uh some 10k half marathon whatever it be to be mass participation event for people to come and show their support to the emergency responders, the NHS and everyone else as well. So we, that's where we feel we can make this something that's a real community national asset uh, rather than just something that we put on every year and people turn up or they don't. It, we need this to be something that's much bigger than that. And we, we really believe we've got it. Well, I like what Ricky Nuttall's just said, he's just piped up with a comment and he's from my neck of the woods, so he speaks as he speaks. But he's just said, sport doesn't solve the problems, but it provides one hell of a respite from them. Uh, such an important cause, yes. guys, and it makes him proud. And, and going on to Ricky, he's you, you've taken him on as one of your ambassadors. Tell, tell us a bit about Ricky. So I got introduced to Ricky from a friend of mine in London Fire Brigade. And um, Ricky is just an incredible individual who's um he's won't mind me saying probably been to hell and back i mean i've seen some things in my time and i've dealt with some things and we all have but uh, if you hear and listen to, to ricky's story um he unfortunately was 
one of those uh, crew members that was responded to Grenfell. And, um, yeah, it's unimaginable. I, I've been to incidents, but what those guys and girls were faced with that day, whether it be fire or police or anyone else, is unimaginable. And he talks about how it's affected him. And I, as I say from the start, I, I've never had, to my knowledge, a real issue personally with mental health but to hear it from others colleagues and it doesn't matter whether he works for london or or whether i'm talking to somebody from scotland or whatever we're still colleagues we get up and do the same job um and it's just it's just really encouraging to see how he has reflected and dealt with things and come out the other side and is really passionate about making a change for everyone else um because he's he's learned so much and he's lived it and that he's he's exactly the type of person that we need um to to well personally for me is the sort of person that i'm here to say thanks to uh, just because i work for the service i still need to say thanks to these people but also is, is exactly the sort of person that we need to be pushing this forward and and telling the story uh of of why people need to get behind the games, the charity, the the whole cause, everything that comes with it. Well, it's like we say that they're the real heroes, despite whether they think it or not, they are. They're the people that go out and look after us on a day to day basis. You know, we we rely on them, and they do a fantastic job. Um, but you know, I, I'm a West Londoner, and to to watch when I woke up that morning, because obviously I went to bed and it all happened in the middle of the night. To to wake up in the morning and and see that. And, you know, my family are from Shepherds Bush and all, all around that area. It was just shocking. But to, I, I remember the one, and it will never escape my head, uh, the one video where the guys are in their, their fire wagon and they're coming around going, what that Wagon? About? Yeah, well, you know what I mean. But I, I, I army, <laughs> sorry, I drove, drove a daft, not, not a fire wagon, fire. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just just that when they filmed it and they were going what well I won't repeat what they said but it, it was just unreal um and and this is what you guys are trained for but it's it's yeah it's it's amazing to think you know yeah yeah it, it must be a struggle every day to be fair I mean yeah I, I um I went to Bunsfield which was the largest fire this country's seen since World War Two. Um, and we felt the explosion up here in um, Buckinghamshire from Hertfordshire uh, that night that we were working. And we talked about it for years of like the, the biggest fire, but there was nobody injured in that in that incident. There was nobody needed rescuing or anything else. We weren't really facing any difficult decisions other than um, where to put the phone. That That night in London was unprecedented and it was just... There isn't a fire service in the world that would have won. No, uh, it was you're just up against it, and yeah, I it's it's, uh, it's great to have Ricky on on uh, uh, part of our team, and um, I'm sure he's going to really open some doors, spread the word, and um, tell the story as we need it to be told, which is perfect. Well, I look forward to meeting Ricky because his dad was Remy. So he's got that army connection as well. And we've got a massive Remy equestrian show jumping guy that's very, very Remy. So it'll be good to catch up with him eventually, which would be, which would be grand. And, and just sort of like have a beer, I guess. That's pretty much how we... I'll, I'll, I'll get him up to Arena UK. I'm sure he'll come. <laughs> yeah, we'll look after him. So, you know, tell us about all your other wonderful ambassadors. We've got a number. I mean, it's, it's been fairly quiet in the sense that we've we've not... We've not really had a great deal to tell because we want to get everything right in the right order and then come out with a big bang. But, uh, yeah, we've got some fantastic uh, support. Um, Darren Goff, uh, somebody I've known for quite some time, who is very good friends with uh, Sam, the fellow founder and director, um, actually stopped him in Tesco's <laughs> in the freezer aisle and said, Darren, you, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Um, so it was quite an informal chat. Um, uh, so, yeah, he's very supportive of what we're doing. Um, Tessa Sanderson, uh, likewise. I mean, they're all really supportive. Um, Tessa Grian, um Jones is now a firefighter in Kent. Uh, he won the Ashes with England. Um, we've got Laura Tott, who some of you will know. Uh, she's recently said she'll come and support, offered and wants to support what we're doing. Um, she, you'll know probably from... Um, first dates with fred 
but uh, yeah, she's a paramedic um, as a full-time job. So, and again, it's great to have somebody who lives it and breathes it, supporting what we're doing. Um, Charlie Hodgson, we've got Dean Stott. Uh, it, the, the list is not endless, but I mean, we, we're looking to, to get the right people with the right attitude that, that understand why this is so important. Um, and they're, they're all really, really valuable in their own way. Well, yeah, the list is that it doesn't have to be endless, it's special. And these people really are embracing yes. what you want uh, to achieve. And, you know, what's great is you've got like Ricky and, and Laura that have or are serving. Um, but then you've also got, especially from the remote services, you've got all these other ambassadors that they would have, you know, they, they would have done, they would have touched base with, you know, our 999 services. Like I say, you pick up the phone and come help me. They would have had some experience. And I, I think that's great. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think I think that's the one thing that... Um that the emergency services has is I don't, there's probably nobody in this country that doesn't know somebody who works for or has worked for the emergency services certainly if you we then bring the nhs into this because they're part of this as well you've got to be living on another planet if you don't know somebody in the emergency services or the nhs um and it's just our way of saying thank you that's really what it's about our way of saying thank you uh, and by way of saying thank you is by providing the support to make sure that they are in the right place when they're called upon yeah. because if they're not when someone picks up the phone and they turn out you don't know what you're getting no. you don't know what state of mind that individual's in and to be fair 99 times out of 100 they put on a face and a front and they are as professional and just unbelievable how they can do that and then go back to their car or to their station or wherever it be and be back in their own little zone but when people call upon us we won't we don't let you down that, that's really really important and what we need to do now is make sure that we don't let them down and that's where although i'm one of them we still we don't let them down that's the main but thing i think that's what makes what your concept and your idea is so important you are one of them it's not like joe blogs has gone i want to do this but hasn't served um, so I think it's so important that it's come from somebody with heart. Um, and I know you've got lots of people around you supporting you that haven't served, but their passion's the same because they have had that element touch their heart in their day-to-day -day life. You know, whatever element, whether it's, you know, someone having a baby or their, you know, their house is burned down, you know, whatever. Um, you, you've all been there. And I think this is where this is such great recognition um, and a big, Thank you, to be fair. Right, thank you. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> no, honestly, I just, I just think it's great. But I just think, you know, even like talking to David, uh, my husband, so he serves, um, and his downtime is going out doing his running or his skiing or cricket or any what we call him a sport, Billy, anything he can throw. So, but that's his escapism. Um, and it's not, he doesn't need to escape life, but it's just his downtime. And I know that from mm -hmm. our members even when we get our youngsters come involved, that the parents have normally served or are serving, and they just like like-minded individuals. And it's the downtime, the camaraderie, the having fun, and it's yeah, it's, it's like-minded people getting together, enjoying yeah. something they love. Yeah, and and that's exactly what we want to achieve with the games themselves. Is that we we want it to feel like a proper games. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to steal the Olympics or anything else, but we want it to be a, a proper event, a proper feel for a, you turn up and you're part of something. Um, but when you're there, you're really there. Yeah, you're a part of it, but you're there to enjoy yourself. And it's that escape from everything else. And that's, that's what we want to create. Uh, and it, I, well, I say it's what we want. It's what we're going to create. 100%. That is definitely what's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think it'd be great. And it's like, you know, obviously you're talking to the equine part of it, but it's not all about horses. Um, you, you've got so much going on, athletics and shooting, and um, there, there, there's low. Well, tell, tell us a bit about some of the sports that you, you're hoping to put on. Obviously, COVID's not helped, but some of the stuff that people can look forward to. Yeah, um, we, we started with a list of literally every sport we could ever think of, um, and we've had to narrow it down because we just time and everything else that permits but uh we're looking at um so our shooting is hosted clay shooting is hosted by churchills who are they're the hosts of the world clay shooting championships they're putting on a whole uh unique um 
100 bird sporting for us, um, which is is fantastic. I mean, the, the, I know from the police perspective, there is a huge uh, following for clay shooting. Uh, athletics with English uh, England athletics, we've got um, triathlon that GB Triathlon are supporting uh, out of Mallory Park, which is the only um, closed circuit uh, triathlon venue in the country. Um, so that's where we're going to go with that. Um, we got literally, you name it, golf, uh, uh, swimming. Why, why are you doing uh, golf? Why, why are you doing golf, Mike? Is there any, any... Well, I can't, I'm not going to play in it and I can't play in it really, but. It's, it is my uh, <laughs> my second home from home is the golf course. <laughs> um, and I think just to throw a little twist in there, we're um, with uh, Motorsport UK, we're putting on karting. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it'd be really good to see all those blue light drivers up against each other, seeing who's the quickest um, without any pedestrians getting in the way or red lights or anything else and just, just go for it. But um, yeah, it's, it's just about fun and just well, you've there's all, plenty of sport driving, driving, haven't you? So I think karting would be amazing to watch. Yeah. Um, I've got my history with uh, crashing, um, so I can't really go into too much, but um, yeah, I def again, I won't be taking part. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where do people go to get involved and, and learn more about uh, the games? Um, or, or I suppose at the moment we're waiting to see what, what's happening with the games as it is definitely going ahead, but, you know, that big boom. Yep. Uh, but about the charity, yes. because I know fully well we, we're pushing it out. We've got lots more events coming up which are going to generate money for the charity. Um, and it's, it's great for our members to be able to learn more about you and, and you know what you've set up etc so then they know where you know where things going uh but yeah you know yeah, so uh, obviously we have a, a website um, designed by WA Design <laughs> um, that's a perfect website for um, UK ESG. So uh, UK ESG is UK Emergency Services Giving. Uh, that's our site. We um, hopefully explain what we're doing on there um if we don't please suggest how we how we can make it a bit better um but that's our main site for the charity uh has all the information as to statistics who we're supporting why we're supporting them where the money's going uh everything will be told there the the games uh as in the gratitude games will have, is, has its own site which at the moment isn't live because we haven't got all of the information to to announce but it will go live and um the gratitude mile will be launched through both sites because it is kind of a joint uh thing so the gratitude mile is purely there to raise the money for the charity but it is part of the gratitude games concepts as well so that that should go live in the next let's say couple of weeks but the, uh, the, hopefully. the only reason with the gratitude games site not going live is we just need to get venues and dates and stuff in a row and you know we've got to be, because it's the nature of your beast covid and you know what you're it, trying it is, to do yes. these games for it's it's people on the front line and you know we, we've just got to wait out and see when we're allowed to go out and play yeah i mean the the site's all built it's all there everything's ready to go it's just that now with the, the postponement from uh, the previous year, the, the dates are all out of sync, the, some of the venues may have changed or whatever else. So there's no point having a site live that just doesn't give the right information. So we're, we've just, we've drawn it for now and it will go live. But it's something to look forward to. It's like, ta-da! So it'll be it great. It is for me. Yeah. But <laughs> Hopefully it is for everyone else. <laughs> that'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah. So we're, we're going to yeah. let anybody else has got any questions. Ricky's gone quiet, which I'm quite concerned about. Ricky, you still there? You're what, oh, no, 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 Ricky's liking Lorna's comment. Uh, but no, unless anybody else has got any questions, I really appreciate your time. This is great from a Forces Equine point of view. So, you know, Cara's just popped up from Avon and Somerset, uh, one of our gratitude um, milers. Uh, but they're all behind you and they're all raising money for it. And it, it's just great to chat to you and for people to see the, the face behind, you know, the, the games and the charity. No, and I, I appreciate uh, you obviously inviting me on, Debbie. And as as uh, we have more to tell and this grows and I get a bit more uh, savvy with a bit of technology, then uh, 
I, <laughs> um, I, I'd love to come back and uh, speak to everyone again and tell them what, what's going on. Yeah, 100%. We welcome you back because obviously I think the way we're doing it at the moment, everyone's stuck at home. So this is great for them to tune in and get involved in what they really love. Um, and I can only say that from like the horse's point of view. Uh, but they love it. But especially when we're allowed to go out to play, it'd be great to do that build a buzz uh, because it gives them all something to look forward to and work towards. Yeah, that's yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Anything I can do to help, just shout. Oh, we will do. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> not too loud. And likewise, and likewise. <laughs> just not after 10 yeah, o'clock even though it's 22, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Dave, thank you Excellent. for your time and uh, you take care. No, thank you. And if anyone's got any you know, questions or whatever, go to uh, ukesg.uk um, and you know, have a look at the website. There's contact forms on there, or you can find them on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, yeah, just hit them up and, and get involved, guys. Perfect. Cheers, Debbie. Take care. Look after yourselves, and thanks everybody for tuning in. Cheers.